This is Bleak Friday, the game I made for the seven day roguelike game jam uh, about a month ago. You probably know that if you've watched my other videos, but what you might not know is that after finishing Bleak Friday, I decided to create another game, a secret game, if you will, in more ways than one, as you're about to see. This is Conversation, an online multiplayer game about figuring out who is impersonating your friend. Unfortunately, creating this game didn't go so well, and in this video I'll be talking about why. Is it because networking is hard, or is it because of other unforeseen circumstances? So how did the idea for Conversation come about? Well, it all started a couple months ago. I wanted to make a family game that I could play with, well, my family, something that would be easy to understand since most people have a hard time coming from the casual uh, Candy Crush liking audience to my games that are a little bit more in depth. I was also uh, inspired by another popular game at the time. You may have heard of it. Actually, you definitely have heard of it. I don't even have to say what it is. So obviously with the COVID-19 pandemic, I'm allowed to say that since I'm not monetized, I had to make some sort of game I could play with my family all inside one house. But since I wanted to make some sort of social deception game, you'd have to keep some information secret so we couldn't all play in front of one computer or TV. We'd have to split up the gameplay across different areas of the house somehow. And we have a lot of electronic devices, but not all of them can run games on Windows or even on Google Play. So I had to make my game in the browser somehow. So just a easy little simple browser-based networking game that also involves some sort of social deception gameplay. Sounds simple, right? Well, apparently it, uh, it, it actually was really simple. I don't think networking is really as hard as anybody else makes it out to be. It's just kind of complicated because it can seem like everything is trying to work against you. Let me explain. Now, if you know anything about game development, you'll know that online network games are pretty hard for people to wrap their heads around, and often it's just easier to make something local multiplayer or let Steam Remote Play do it for you. Well, as I previously mentioned, I want to make this browser-based, so I can't let Steam do any heavy lifting. It was time for me to learn Unity networking. And luckily, Unity had a wonderful system already in place called UNet. You may have heard of it. It's their all-in-one networking, uh, what? Oh, uh, UNet is apparently obsolete now, and I have to find a replacement for it. Well, no sweat. Let's see what's on the market. First up, we've got Unity's ML API package in the package manager. It seems to be their new all-in-one networking platform just for Unity. Unfortunately, uh, package manager does not like me or something because I could not for the life of me get it to download. So let's see what other alternatives there are. The other two options are pretty similar. They both seem to be sort of replacements for UNet pretty much directly. It's uh, Photon or PUN networking and then Mirror networking. And unfortunately, Photon networking seems to have a lot of paywalls that you can run into quite easily. So I decided to just bite the bullet and download Mirror instead. But before I implemented networking, I wanted to have some basic UI for the gameplay in the first place. I decided to go with a simple terminal looking kind of thing, sort of like chat and other online games. And pretty soon I actually got the chat system working pretty well. So I went to try it with more than one player and, oh wait, I have to do the online code. Let me do that real quick. Okay, online code is done. Now let me try it with another device. And it doesn't actually work. Well, let me try it with another window on my computer. That should work. And that doesn't work either. Time to learn some more about networking. So UNet, and by extension Mirror, has a system of networking that, like most systems, has a client and a server. The client is where the player inputs commands and sends them back up to the server, and the server interprets those commands and changes the game state to send them back down to the client. Now, sending commands up to the server is easy. You just have to put this little command thing in front of your method, and it'll call it on the server instead of the client. You can use those parameters to send data up from the client to the server. 
And for sending data back from the server to the clients, you actually have two options. You can use sync variables or you can use client RPC methods. Now, I wasn't able to get sync vars to work, so I had to stick with client RPC methods. Luckily, those are basically the opposite of command methods. You call them on the server and they're executed on all of the clients. If you want to, you can call them on a single client using target RPC calls, but I didn't find those necessary. So that's really how to wrap your head around the idea of all that online networking, but for some reason, I was not able to wrap my head around that at all. And it took me multiple refactors to get something that actually worked on multiple devices or even just multiple windows on my computer. But after figuring that out and getting the networking done, I was kind of on a roll. You had to enter your IP address to connect to somebody else's computer, but I got around that by actually using QR codes. Your computer would generate a QR code of your IP address, and then the client would scan that code to join your game. It was actually pretty cool, and I don't think I've seen any other games do that. I mean, it's probably just because other developers have enough money to buy a list server for like 20 bucks and use that, but you know, whatever. Anyway, yeah, as I said, I was pretty much on a roll. Unfortunately, uh, pride comes before the fall, and this is where the project started to go downhill. Now, in order to put my game on the browser, I had to use the WebSockets transport method for getting my data from the client to the server and vice versa. That's the only thing that works with WebGL. With that in mind, I set my transfer for Mirror to the WebSocket transfer, and ignored the little field saying SSL certificate because, you know, that's just some uh, jargon or whatever. You know, it's obviously not necessary. So with that conveniently ignored, I set up a little test. I built my game for WebGL and dropped it on itch.io privately so I could connect to it using the same account on other computers. Fortunately, once I scanned the QR code, I was greeted with a simple security error. Uh, apparently that SSL field was actually kind of important. Unfortunately, to have an SSL certificate, you need to use your website server to basically tell web browsers that it's okay and your website is encrypted. Unfortunately, I don't own itch.io and they're definitely not going to let some random potential hacker just tell every web browser that their website is secure for their simple little Unity game. What I'm trying to say is, itch.io would not let me put my project on there and say it's secure. That's alright though. Undeterred, I went to Game Jolt, my platform of choice for Wing It, my indie mobile game that I made back in February. Sorry for the shameless plug. And luckily, you can actually disable HTTPS or SSL on your Game Jolt page. Unfortunately, that also uh, apparently makes everything not work. There pretty much seems to be no way around getting an SSL certificate, which means you have to host the game on your own website. And I wasn't gonna get a website just for that one simple game for my family. But Amazon hosts free servers and GoDaddy only costs like, what, 10 bucks to get a website for a year? It should be pretty easy, and even I'm super cheap, and I could definitely spend that money. So, I could definitely get the project working, but... So why did it fail, then? Well, I think the project pretty much failed because I didn't actually plan the scope of this. This was supposed to be just a test to see if I could make a networked game, and in that regard, it was definitely a success. I learned that... Networking isn't really that hard once you understand it. And I just wanted to make a fun game for my family. I could definitely do that in some other medium, whether it's a physical or just a simpler game. But enough about that particular project. Is networking really that hard? I wouldn't say so. It's just a bit hard to understand in the first place, but once you figure it out, it's pretty good, and I actually learned some valuable information from learning networking and making this project. But that's all I have to say about it. Remember to buy Wing It, and have a good day.